Bruno Komodo backstage UFC fight night with Misha Tate, who fought so mean tonight. I mean, so mean. It, it, DC said it in, in the cage as well, but it's just like, yeah, your, your fire was just on, on point tonight. That's exactly what it was. I, I had this real big burning desire in my heart to show who I am. I've been recognized a lot for fighting with heart and being tough, and I was like, tonight I want to fight with my skills. You know, I've relied so much on the fact that I can I can absorb punishment, but it's I'm so much better than that. I'm so I'm I'm like I was manifesting this as like I am an athlete among women. Like I am an elite athlete. I have a skill set. I have a plan. I have a burning desire, especially when so many people were calling for retirement. You know, I heard that word so many times. It's like, yes, I've been doing this for 18 years, and tonight marks my 20th professional victory. But it's like, I'll know when it's time. You know, and I knew tonight was not time. Like I, I still doing great. I still feel great. Yeah. Was the retirement talk coming from anybody that mattered, or was it just a bunch of outside noise? Um, you know, I, I definitely heard the word mumbled around in my family because I think you know that they want to see me be well and okay, and so I, I understand that. And then I heard a lot from you know the fans, the comments, you know, um, the question, should I retire even? You know, and it's like. Nobody else's opinion really matters to me, but when you hear it, like I had to digest it somehow. And the way that I digested it was that I'm gonna prove everybody wrong. Like I'm gonna show that nobody else gets to dictate my future. Yeah. That that's the choice that I'll make when I'm ready. Well, it was one of the most impressive performances of your career. You, you did come back here though, you're holding a crutch and your knee is, is, is bandaged up. What, what, what happened in the fight and do, do you know what, what it could be? So I felt my knee pop when I had her back. I was just trying to put a lot of pressure on the, the back and I think that I just kind of did it very explosively. So I felt a pop. So we'll have to see, you know, it's, it doesn't feel too terrible right now. It's just we're being precautious. So we're gonna get an MRI and that's really all we're gonna know what's wrong with it. How, I guess, you know, you came out and you proved people wrong and you made the statement that you wanted to make. So, I mean, I don't want to, like, I'm not sitting here like, oh, well, now you can retire, right? right but it's just right. like, how, how are you deciding? What, what's, what is, like, your thought process moving forward? I think that I'll just know. I have a great intuition that I'm really leaning into. You know, I think I have great um, conversations with myself. To be honest, I know that probably makes me sound like, oh, you're a crazy person, you talk to yourself. Yes, I do, I talk to myself all the time. And it's what my heart tells me, you know? Like, the belief that I have in myself is like, I, I'm not ready, I'm not ready to retire yet. And I really wanted tonight's performance to prove to everybody that I still have a lot to give. And thank God for the UFC Performance Institute and these things that keep our bodies younger for longer because the knowledge that I have, nobody can make up for that. As long as I can keep my body running healthy, I'm gonna be able to go out there and have performances like this. Can you talk a little bit about the finish? Because she did, she tapped like so frantically. What what was going on there at the, in, the, in the finish? All I felt was my forearm kind of go between her, in, in her mouth essentially. So I think her jaw was open. She was probably breathing really heavy. Mm -hmm. And um, so I caught her chin. So I don't know like if there was some pain in her jaw when I locked it, but it was basically a jaw lock rear naked choke. If I, that's what it felt like to me. So I, I don't know. I don't know if her tongue was in the way of her teeth or what, but I was happy to get a quick tap. So last thing for me, um, and obviously we got to see what's what's going to happen with the knee. Um, but to me, Misha Tate versus Holly Holm is is the fight to make. Is is that how you feel? I, lo I would love that fight. I think that's great. Yeah. I mean, I have so much respect for Holly, and I think to run it back again, you know, and just remembering again tonight was realizing a dream for me. Yeah. Tonight was every bit as important as my world title fight, because for me, I showed up with the same burning desire that I must, I will accept nothing less than winning this fight. I have to win, and I was manifesting it, and manifesting it, and. And um, for me, this, this, this was the equivalent to that because I think not that many people like really cared, you know, when there's not a title on the line and all the glitz and the glam, but I worked so hard for this fight and it really lit the fire again, you know, and I think my last fight going down to 125 was kind of just an error on my part. I just wanted to try something and I'm proud of myself that I did it, but it wasn't my best performance. And I just want to show I'm still here. I haven't been outside the top 10 since I've ever been in the UFC. And yeah. today I walked in at number 12 and I was like, I want to make a statement. Like, I belong in the top 10. Well, I'm happy for you. And you definitely made a statement. Hopefully the knee is good and uh, we'll see you back real soon in 2024. Thanks, Misha.